Hi everyone and welcome to my channel called Susanna Reacts where I learn all about India with your help and I just share uh, my Slovak um, um, Central European observation. So uh, in today's video I wanted to look into a, a connection between Indian and European DNA. I haven't seen that video at all so it's like my first time real real reaction and I'm very curious uh, to learn more about uh, the topic from one of your favorite guys so I hope you will like and enjoy the video so let's start so Yashwant asks where did R1A originate various reports claim different places including India Iran etc why is it now dominant point of view by AIT could Scythians and other responsible for the gene flow etc right wow so for those of you who don't know, R1A is a genetic lineage. It's a patrilineal genetic lineage. It's called a haplogroup in genetic terminology. So it's a lineage that is passed on from father to son. It's a specific genetic mutation. And uh, the uh, genetic uh, research shows that this lineage is at least 15 to 20,000 years old. And there is a lot of controversy about where it has originated. And the reason for the controversy is this, that R1A is the world's most successful extended family. It's the most successful genetic lineage that is known to humankind. Its ah. population today is probably more than 1 billion people. And there are two clusters, geographical clusters, where most of these people of this particular lineage live. Okay. One is the Indian subcontinent. Okay. And the other one is uh, Eastern Europe and Northern Europe. So Poland, Germany, uh, Ukraine, Russia, that, that area. Ah. So these are two clusters, geographical clusters, where you find the majority of the males who have this specific genetic lineage. Oh my God, I just have such a thought. I don't know if I'm able to actually speak it out loud, but this is why I'm acting the way I'm acting. And just some, something suddenly clicked. Wow, let's learn a bit more. Now the question, so therefore historians and geneticists, etc. have hypothesized that this particular genetic lineage is the one that is associated with the spread of Indo-European languages and okay. culture. So in essence, the people who originally carried this lineage are the original Aryan invaders and that uh, the the, the Theory is that these people invaded India about two and a half thousand, about, about three thousand years, three and a half thousand years before present from Eastern Europe and from Central Asia. So that is the prevailing consensus opinion among eminent historians right now. Okay. So there are a number of questions about it. First of all, there is no evidence of where this particular lineage has originated from. So every genetic lineage has a certain geographical origin. And how do we determine the origin? We find the region where there is the most genetic diversity within that lineage. So the question is, where do we find the most genetic diversity within the R1A lineage? Okay. And it is most likely to be India. So there is research being done right now within India by geneticists. Uh, some research is being done. A lot of research is being done. Some papers will be published hopefully soon. Okay. And what is most likely going to happen, what is most likely going to emerge from this research is that India is the homeland of the R1A lineage, okay. which, would com which would completely reverse the narrative that is uh, currently prevailing, that the Aryans invaded India from the West, mm -hmm. if R1A is the homeland, if India is the homeland of the R1A lineage, it would indicate that the expansion of R1A happened from out, from within India outwards to the West. Therefore, it would mean that there was an Aryan invasion, but from India into Europe. Mm -hmm. So that is why there is a controversy because uh, the consensus opinion is the is the reverse of that, mm -hmm. and because the academic system, the academic uh, environment, the academic milieu is very much Eurocentric as of now, because all the research, all the, the major funding and the major uh, 
research institutes, genetic institutes, etc., are all in the West. And they are invested in protecting a certain worldview and a certain narrative. So that is the reason for this controversy. And they are funding many people in India, many uh, journalists, mm -hmm. many writers. And therefore, uh, there is this conflict that is going on right now between the proponents of one narrative and the proponents of another narrative. I am not interested in any narrative. I am interested in seeing what the research sure. tells us. Mm -hmm. So most likely the research is going to show that R1A is Indian in origin. Now you asked a question about Scythians. Most Scythian skeletons that you find throughout Eurasia, most of the male Scythian skeletons have this R1A lineage. So it's clear that uh, the, the Scythians were very much part of this expansion, wow. whether it's out of India or whether it's out of Europe, we will soon find out. But wow. yes, the Scythians definitely are very closely genetically, culturally, and ethnically related oh. to the Indian people. Exam topics. Okay. Um, this is cool. I loved it. I would love to know, actually, because it's a two years ago uh, that video has been released. If there, if any of you know anything about that research, like if it's like w which kind of theory is that, and I think he's right in saying that. Um, I mean, that is my observation as well, that the narrative and the history has been funded by the people usually won wars and all that kind of fun stuff um but um man this is interesting and i i think one more point when he was saying about uh, you know aryan invaded in india versus the other way around like from at least from my education and then we can talk about like you know how education ed educated or uneducated we all are because you know in every nation there will be a certain narrative that is supported and the others and there is a bigger narrative that is more funded than the other so the history has really been manipulated uh so it, it is just uh, let's just uh, you know be i would say you know open about it um and just like try to look at uh, information as, as it's being presented perhaps we'll never know the truth but it's just nonetheless really fascinating because when we and I think from the fourth to sixth century, there was like a big the kind of movements of nations. I don't know, how, you know, if I still remember this correctly. I didn't double check, uh, but the, nonetheless, there were there were there were centuries when the nations were moving. And I wonder if that you know, like it, it was kind of movement from Asia to here. Um, so there might be that there, there there would have been some influence, and it, it was very interesting why he was talking about um, when when he talked about the the kind of uh, Indian influence, and he mentioned like more like um, what people would call Eastern Europe, which is really not an Eastern Europe but Central Europe, because Poland is Central Europe, Slovakia is Central Europe, uh, Czech Republic is still Central Europe, um, um, but. Um, it's it's very very interesting because as a, as a Slavic nations and perhaps maybe with some Indian influence I don't know, um, you know they they kind of I've seen some sort of comments you know around the world wars from like the British about that they need to eradicate Slavic people etc. So. <laughs> um, interesting link there, don't you think? Um, but. Um, yeah, fascinating, fascinating. If if any of you know any further research, I would be so, so uh, grateful if you could share that with me. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe to this channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, you take care. Bye-bye.